Ladies and gentlemen, we present the Navy Lark with our three stars, Dennis Price, John Pertwee, and Leslie Phillips. Now, we all want to be in films, whether we look like Richard Todd after six weeks in the sun, or Boris Karloff after six all-night parties. However, getting into films is one thing, getting out of them can be an even wiser move, as our island draft learned the hard way. Say, Heather, mm -hmm. have you heard the news? We are going to be on the films. Well, what? Well, some company is going to make a film about the Navy and the Admiralty of Lintland Trout Bridge and us for a couple of days. Only a couple? It's going to be a terribly short film. Oh, well, I don't think we're quite in all of it. No. <laughs> They're going to pad it out a bit with a lot of actors, I think. <laughs> you mean actors playing naval officers? Yes. It's ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> Well, what's old Thundergut's got to do with it? Love interest, probably. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh, there goes number one. <clears throat> like a blooming bee in the wrong hive. Well, you better go and see what he wants, or you'll be the one that gets down. Oh, Lummy, he's swarming. <laughs> Come in. Hi, good morning, sir. You swatted me? I, I mean, uh, <laughs> you, uh, you wanted me, sir? Yes, about as much as the drowning man will clutch at the straw. Yes, Mr. Phillips, I did. Where have you been? Oh, practically everywhere, sir. I stayed with my auntie Skegness last year, and, um... <laughs> well, I had a week in Merthyr Tidbull's. Yeah. Idiot. You have no doubt heard that Troutbridge and ourselves are to be at the disposal of a film company for a few days. Mm. Now, Commander Povey will inform us of exactly what we're required to do and where we are to sail. Oh, sir, am I navigating again? Again? If my memory serves me correctly, you've never actually navigated for us yet. We've merely arrived at our intended destination through a process of elimination and blind guesswork. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's a bit hard, huh? Is it? Oh, well, I recall that uh, during your hit-and-miss efforts to find Dover on one trip, we docked at so many foreign ports, you became known as the playboy of the Western world. <laughs> Well, sir, I, I found Dover, eventually. You didn't. That was how. <laughs> but it seemed to be your best offer. Yeah. Now, this time, I would be grateful if you would take note of our intended destination and try to remember to take at least the schoolboy actress with you. Aye, aye, sir. In fact, you might stand a better chance if you brought the schoolboy as well. <laughs> oh, don't you worry, sir. I'll be on the ball this time, sir. You'll be on the carpet if you're not... Uh, now, I'll go and get C.P.O. Pressy provisioning tripe bread so we can put to sea as soon as we're acquired. He's doing a bit of gardening outside the store, sir. Gardening? Oh, Pressy, incredible. I've known him to call a spade a spade, but I've never actually seen him lift one. <laughs> I must investigate this at once. <laughs> Back to nature, the smell of new mown grass. Oh, invigorating all that pretty oh. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to push this blooming mower for a bit? No, Johnson, no. No, frankly, I wouldn't rob you. I wouldn't rob you of the healthy exercise that'll lose some of the excess tonnage round your grass box. <laughs> Slave labour, that's what it is. Yes, agreed, Nutter Patty, agreed. Now, come on, get labour in, slave. I know. Couldn't I use the motor mower? I could get done in no time then. You'll get done in no time if you're not careful. <laughs> Unfortunately, Johnson, I cannot permit you to use the motor mower. As I have no authority to use the petrol. You could get the authority? No, Johnson, I could not. However, if, uh, if you care to offer me a reasonable price for a gallon of petrol... I might see my way clear. I knew it, I knew it. There had to be a reason why you come over all garden conscious. You've got a lot of gas petrol on your hands, haven't you? Not a lot, Johnson, no. No, just a gallon. How much? Yeah, I'm skinned. Get pushing in. <laughs> One man went to mow, went to mow, the meadow. How's me credit? I've got the IOU made out, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> You're rotten, you are. Right, I've stored up the mower, Johnson. The petrol's already in it. <laughs> oh. You were pretty confident, weren't you? Yeah, I was, Johnson. I tried to push that hand mower earlier. I nearly did myself a grave injustice and all. <laughs> oh, well, I wish you'd have pushed a bit harder then, that's all. Don't you snap at me, you hound dog. You get mowing. 
Slave driver. You know, I'm a nice ride. Mm. Hey. Whoa. Hey. Hey, stop. Oh, glory. Straight through the guard room. <laughs> and out again. Pull the crap out from this. Hey, Chief. What? What is it? They're having their elevenses in the guard room. <laughs> You bulldozing great care away, you. You've bashed the front door down going in and the back door down coming out. Well, I've done the pile on their carpet a bit of a mess. You've been all... Oh, stupid great motorized home wrecker. Look what you've done. Judging, the guard seems to have noticed. I'm not surprised he was standing on the carpet. Yeah. <laughs> He's enough jumping I jump past. <laughs> well, you should have hooted. All right, what is number one? Ah, good morning, Chief. I see you're both indulging in a little late horticulture. I see. Uh. Now, couldn't it be nice? We've been gardening. Uh. <laughs> oh, my mistake. Uh, Chief, I want to try to made ready at once. We may have to put to sea at any time. Oh, yes, sir. Who's caught up with it? Uh, Chief, we are putting to sea under Admiralty orders, not doing a moonlight split in a frigate. Oh, we thought it's that monocyte. And in your case, a natural one, Chief. Commander Purvey will be here shortly, and we are to be at the disposal of a film company. Film company? Cool. Mm. I'm going to be a film star then. Hardly, Johnson, hardly. I presume this is a naval picture, then, I guess, is it? Not a sequel to the horrors of the Black Museum. It is indeed, Chief, and it's not a sequel to the horrors of the Black Market either, so watch it. Well, I don't. Now, see about repairing tribes at once. I must get back to the office and see if Commander Povey has arrived yet. Oh, I doubt it, sir. We'd have heard him. Very probably. Mm. If the wind's in the right direction, you can hear him give the order to cast off in Portsmouth. <laughs> and very useful that has been at times, Chief. Yeah, a fine pair of lungs he's got, sir. Yeah, well, then try not to have them bellowing in your direction this trip. Grand morning, isn't it? Grand morning. <laughs> There's always something in there. Number one here. Jetty Guard, yes, sir. Pompey launch sighted, sir. Oh, thank you, girls, in. We were expecting it. The launch is right in my line of fire, sir. Can I bang off a couple of rounds just for practice? No, you can't. Well, just one minute, sir. No. Seems a terrible waste, sir. I couldn't miss it. Uh, girls, in. Uh, you appear to have been on guard duties too long. You're trigger happy. Tell the chief we'll all be a lot safer if he finds you something else to do. Aye, aye, sir. You know, sir, he's getting dangerous. <laughs> Getting, he's got. <laughs> uh, number one here. Jetty guard again, sir. Well? <laughs> Beg pardon, sir. <laughs> Gilsin! Uh, Gilsin, uh, hello, Gilsin! Oh, let's hope he didn't hit anything expensive. Number one! What the blazes is that idiot on the jetty guard paying at? <laughs> Just as my coxswain was tying up the launch, your raising lunatic fired at us. Really? I must remember to tell him what a rotten shot he is. <laughs> Sorry, nearly blew my star off. Well, if you had your back to him, it's a fair-sized target, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh uh, you mean uh, the son of the, uh, the launch, uh, <laughs> Mr. Phillips? <laughs> this sort of mistake creates a very bad impression on our guests. Now, let me introduce you to the film director, Mr. Anthony J. Anthony. <laughs> Oh, I've just had the most wonderful shock. <laughs> yes, you do look a bit pale. <laughs> so do be if you'd had a flaming great shell whip past your nap off. And now perhaps you'd like to explain to the number one what you want them to do first. Certainly. Lock up that nut who fired at us. Oh, of course. Uh, the waiting impression has been relieved of his duties. <laughs> As from now. And, 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 uh, sub uh, uh, nervous quaking. Uh, 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 uh speaking. Uh, who? Oh, hang on, I'll ask. Uh, what is it? Uh, Jetty Guards, eh? He says, beg pardon again, and would you like duck for dinner? <laughs> Tell him not. Tell him to report to Chief Petty Officer Pertwee in place of under close arrest. Mm, I know. Uh, go in, uh, find the Chief, and get yourself bunged in the rattle. What? No, 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 you can't. No, he can't, what? Poop off one more for luck, sir. <laughs> I think not indeed. Mr. Anthony has been upset enough already. I, I must apologize, Mr. Anthony. Well, now where's he gone? Well, he appears to have gone to ground under the knee hole of my desk. But I'm not coming out until the feet fall. Oh, go on, be a devil. <laughs> he 
he hasn't aimed this way yet. Well, he'd better not. Now, for goodness sake, come out of bed and tell them what the draft is required to do for this picture. Oh, oh all right, then. <coughs> you and your frigate are in the battle sequence. Oh, well, that'll please Abel Seaman goes in. I've marked the north headland on this map. And on this other side of it, we've built some sweet to good marsh. <laughs> Out of wood and canvas. Your job will be to sail around the headland, and as soon as you can see these dummy shirts, open fire on them. Will you be aboard? Yes, yeah. I shall be on top of the headland with the camera crew. <laughs> you don't think I'll be any safer up there, do you? <laughs> I'm having a chauffeur, dog, and I'll direct through a periscope. Oh, I shouldn't bother. If you're there, Ghostine will sell it you out eventually. <laughs> yes, and you know, Ghostine may give you the most beautiful shock. <laughs> Come on, service office, Portsmouth. Admiral, dear, I've got a call for you. This is the Admiral. Who's that? It's Command service, Oh, never no, mind. It's my porpoise. I say, it's Povey there. I'm not in Piedmont, visiting the island drum. Oh, don't bother. I expect he's visiting the island drum. <laughs> Can I take a message, sir? Well, the devil should I know. Your Povey's secretary, not mine. <laughs> Mine's a complete moron. Mumbles all the time. I know. Can you take a message? <laughs> I'll try, sir. Well, tell him there's a home fleet exercise on tomorrow, will you? Down your way somewhere. C and C Portsmouth knows all about it. I should too, but nobody tells me a thing up here. I'll ask him to contact a C and C as soon as possible. Oh, good girl. No, no, no. Better than that. Tell him to contact the C and C as soon as possible. <laughs> oh, cheerio. Thanks for ringing. Remember me to. <laughs> Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Left hand down a bit, sir. Steady at that. Steady at that, sir. <laughs> uh, over a bit. Over a bit, a bit light, sir. <laughs> Mr. Phillips, is it quite impossible for you to get us underway without sliding great chunks off the jetty? <laughs> I think, sir, I always forget the beast. Um, I'm... Uh, nothing to worry about, sir. When we get back, we won't even be able to see it, sir. Mm. You're so right. The post you knocked off this time is on deck and coming with us. <laughs> oh, well done, sir. You caught the post. <laughs> oh, oh, very funny. <laughs> uh, who's next for postman's knock? The gas works if you don't look out. What? Oh, oh, lummy. Oh, oh. Uh, 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 back a bit. Back. Oh. <laughs> Uh, no, no, scrub that. Um, scrub that. Uh, right hand up to the top and back again. <laughs> right hand up to the top and back again. Uh, what is this dance we're doing, Mr. Phillips? The shimmy? Oh, yes, sir. Do you reverse? <laughs> I mean, um, steady at that, Chief. I'm almost frightened to ask, Mr. Phillips, but have you by some accident brought the chart showing our destination with you? Oh, no, sir, I don't. Oh, good gracious, I have. <laughs> Oh, I am proud. <laughs> Our heartiest, Mr. Phillips. Now, before you become drunk with power, may I suggest you read the wretched thing and point us in the right direction. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm always willing to... What was that? Oh, well, there's a thing, sir. <laughs> it's Nunky and he's Tug, sir. <laughs> ah, now, there's a surprise. Who whistled him up? Uh, well, sir, I may have happened to mention just been passing the course that Trout Reach was put in the sea. And it's a pure coincidence, sir, Nunky's dear. Uh -huh. As I thought. Well, this time, Nunky is dead out of luck. If we're stuck aground for the rest of our service, I'm not asking your Uncle Ebenezer for assistance this time, so you can tell him to put that down his dilapidated smokestack and puff it. <laughs> oh, well, Nunky will be very disappointed, sir. He reckons his business is founded on Mr. Phillips's navigation. Oh, I say, steady on. <laughs> if he don't cop a bob or two out of us every time we go out, he's usually all right for a bit of salvage work from ships who haven't quite passed us in the night. <laughs> no, no, this time, Monkey! He's brought his chops with him! <laughs> <laughs> 
Language, monkey, language! <laughs> Sound and you, Chief. I want to... or Nunky will run out of steam. Uh, uh, one last word. <laughs> I said, Perky, really? Oh, that, that dummy, sir, Nunky's in a right temper now. He's shoveling coal on like mad. That's who he is. Yeah, what do you think he's doing? He's, he's heading this way. Oh, it's all right, sir. I think he's going... Everybody down! <laughs> Driving his silly old fool's ramble. And scuttled himself. If we had the Marine Band aboard, we could have given him a chorus of hand, knees, and bumps to daisy. Help! I'm drowning! Oh, it's pity, but I suppose you'd better pick him up, sir. A lower seaboat, Chief. Oh, I said. Lower seaboat and pick up old Father Ken! <laughs> And whilst we're at the bus stop, you might have another look at the chart, Mr. Phillips, just to see if we are, by some remote chance, on course. Oh, we are, sir. We should be coming up this side of the headland any time now, sir. Oh, I'm delighted and astonished to hear it. I trust Mr. Anthony J. Anthony has had sufficient time to dig himself in by now. Come on, Oh, Lummy, old Thundergut. Oh, good gracious, I didn't know you were aboard, sir. That is hardly surprising. At the last moment, I thought if this confounded film company are ever to get the scene they want, I'd better be aboard to keep an eye on you. I know that was kind of you, sir. <laughs> However, I'd hardly stepped on deck when I got clutched in the back of the neck by a whacking great jetty poster that landed. <laughs> oh, what a shine, sir. <laughs> I just about recovered from that and was about to make a few notes. Notes, sir? I want you to be sure that my evidence that your court martial should miss out nothing, Mr. Phillips. Oh, well, if there's any little details you're hazy about, sir, I'd be only too pleased. Oh, lummy. <laughs> Leslie Phillips, retired. RN. Rapidly. I hardly got my pencil out when I knocked... I hardly got my pencil out when I knocked off my feet again as a British man. Uh, you're not having a very good day, are you, sir? <laughs> I'm having a wonderful day. A few personal inconveniences are well worth enduring, as it means I've got the lot of you where I want you at last. Um, no, hardly, sir. I mean, it will merely be your evidence against our no evidence. evidence. evidence number uh, one. You're forgetting the owner of that ghastly tug. Oh, blimey, monkey. Uh, permission to drop him overboard again, sir. <laughs> Certainly not. Oh. I'm sure he will prove to be a most cooperative witness. And if he makes a claim, I shall support it up to my hilt. I had a feeling you might. Now, for goodness sake, get underway or Mr. Anthony will never get this wretched film finished. Certainly, sir. We should be coming up our side of the North Heaven very shortly now. Come on, the is off of Portman. Admiral, dear, I'll have a call for you. Well, this is the Admiral speaking. Aye, sir. I say, what's happened to your voice, Poe? It's gone all squeaky. He's his commander, Perry's secretary, sir. What? Oh, never mind. I'll have a word with your secretary. <laughs> commander Perry's not here, sir. Ain't not there. Well, that's dashed awkward. When he turns up, tell him the C&C wants him to join him aboard Makepeace. He's lying with the rest of the home fleet off the South Headland. Aye, aye, sir. Commander Perry may be a boy tried to get off the North Headland by oh, now. Oh, stop mumbling and find out where Povey is, will you? Well, nice of you to call. Oh, by the way, oh, what's his name? Send his... Left hand down a bit. <laughs> Left hand down a bit of tea, sir. Now, um, on the other lock. On the other lock, sir. You know, where he learned navigation is a complete mystery to me. I didn't learn it, sir. I just sort of picked it up. And you should have put it down again, quick. <laughs> oh, fair, fair, sir. We're on course this time. 
We should be rounding the headland any minute now, sir. Amazing how much simpler it is when you remember to bring your charts with you, isn't it? <laughs> Fascinating, very nice. Yes. I never believed it would make so much difference. Oh. <laughs> I, I'll make sure I always have them in future, sir. Now, as far as the Navy is concerned, Mr. Phillips, I very much doubt if you had any future. I've had a few words with the captain of that tug you ran. I ran, but he ran us. Not according to his evidence. And mine, of course. Uh, don't worry, Mr. Phillips. Uh, Luck, he'll soon change his tune, and I've had a word in his show off. <laughs> Bridge number one here. Oh, look out, sir. We're coming round the headland, and I can see the dummy ship, sir. Thank you, so can we. Beg pardon, sir. <clears throat> but Abel Simon Goldstein says, can he come out that rattle long enough to part of him, sir? Uh, no, he cannot. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Phillips. Uh, we seem to be in the right place, sir. Go. Oh, it's, uh, it was nothing. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're being modest, sir. Oh, the blinding miracle. <laughs> Number one, I said it might be a lot wiser for all concerned if I took command now, as I know exactly what Mr. Anthony requires. Oh, by all means, sir. Bridge number one here. Port Luke out, sir. The dormitory ships are within range, sir. Thank you. Able Seaman Goldstein spotted them through the fourth hole, too, sir. And he says all he wants is just one quick spot, sir. No. I say, this home company have done a jolly convincing job, haven't they? I mean, those ships look positively real. Yes, most effective. <laughs> You'd never think they were just bits of wood and canvas, wouldn't you? No, all very realistic. I said, oh, I suppose they couldn't possibly... Well, don't ask me, Chief. Commander Povey's in command for the present. Oh! Oh, yes! <laughs> How are you, sir? Stand by guns. Stand by guns, sir! Bridge, yep. Gunnery officer here. I'm Captain Raring to go. What's the old target? Captain Raring? Really? On the command part, I want those dummy ships dead ahead, blasted out of the water. I say, thanks, sir. Just, uh, just give us a shout when you're ready, won't you? Give us a shout? Ah, oh, that's the style, yes. He's like, I, <laughs> I don't know what to say. How about four, sir? <laughs> Sir, I say, I just noticed something. What? No, no, sir, but... Far one. Hey, the That's odd. That's the terribly strong wood, sir. Far two, continuous. Blimey, the dummies are falling back. <laughs> Here, I say, they're, they're not supposed to do that, are they? <laughs> They're signaling. But, but they can't. They're coming. Uh, not exactly, sir. Now, no, I'll read the signal down. Signal read. Two idiots aboard that bridge <laughs> from CNC. Stop tackling the own fleet single handed. <laughs> what are you going to do? Start the civil war. <laughs> Message ends abruptly, sir. Uh, I think it's for you, sir. Oh, please, good grief. I've shot at the CNC. Well, the third team, sir, I'm knowing him. I feel he may shoot back when you return to Pompey. I, I beg pardon, sir, but I've just been looking at the top of the headland and I can't see the camera anywhere. That's what I was trying to say before, you know. And according to the charge, you see, they should be, um... Oh, <laughs> Oh, oh, lummy. <laughs> Philip, what have you done? Oh, simple mistake, sir. I mean, it could have happened to anyone. Thing, what is it? Well, I, um... <laughs> uh, you're, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> well, try us, sir, for dry sight. <laughs> well, I, um, I had the chart upside down. <laughs> what? This isn't the North Headland at all, sir. It's the South. <laughs> You raving lunatic. First you hazard the ship, then you ram a tug, and now you've made me practically wipe out our entire naval strength. Clumsy, aren't I, sir? <laughs> You'll suffer by this. Now I'll have you in the tar before I'm through. Uh, big told you, sir, and with all due respect, sir. But I wouldn't advise that, sir. No. <laughs> you wouldn't what? Well, sir, it was a simple mistake, sir. Could have happened to anyone on shore, sir. But as coxswain, more evidence for Mr. Phillips' defense, more evidence. Your evidence? What evidence? Well, sir, in a manner of speaking, at the time you took them out, sir, I don't recall your checking the ship's position before you took over. Sir. <laughs> I was here all the time. Ah, but uh, not in command, sir. Exactly, sir. And I don't recall you making any inquiry as to the ship's course either. 
It's ridiculous. Like, oh, what? that simple mistake, sir, could have happened to anybody. Of course, sir, of course. Uh, it's missed a very little discrepancy. Good up and distribute your memory. Uh, no disparagement on your another guy, Mr. Phillips. You help yourself, Chief. <laughs> Just get me out of this muck. <laughs> yes, sir, with a lacquer, Mr. Phillips. With a lacquer. Yes, Chief, this promises to be a fair old corker. Yes. Happened to slip my memory? What are you talking about? Oh, well, sir, I thought it was just possible we might not have heard your order to fire. Just <laughs> heard it? We opened fire, man. I'll say we did. <laughs> oh, a great tragic, Cabal. A great tragic. I will see him in Goldstein's a good lad. But he's triggered at me, sir. And with a long sick leave, sir, I'm sure he'll recover. Ah, Goldstein, of course. That's that overwork, it was, sir. And that's a cultivation to do to. <laughs> the lad's not to blame, sir. He comes from a good home. <laughs> Never a word out of you. Oh, all right, all right, all right. Your absolute part master's a blackmail. The whole conniving bunch of you. The praise from Caesar is praise indeed. I take it then, sir. It's, uh, it's a deal. It's a deal. Oh, well done, Patrick. Oh, thank you, sir. Right, pull ahead together and, uh... Left hand down a bit. Pull it together and left hand uh, up. Mr. Phillips. Yes, sir? Enough is enough. I'll navigate. Oh, very wise, sir. Thank you, Chief. Left hand down a bit. <laughs> left hand down a bit, okay, sir. Grand morning for bashing the daylight out of the home fleet, isn't it? That was Dennis Price, John Perpey, and Leslie Phillips working their passage in the Navy Lark, written by Laurie Wyman. Dennis Price was the number one, John Perpey was the chief petty officer, Leslie Phillips was the sub-lieutenant, Commander Povey was played by Richard Caldicott, Abel Seaman Johnson was Ronnie Barker, Heather was Heather Chasen, the Admiral was Tenniel Evans, and Anthony J. Anthony was played by Michael Bates. The recording production was by Alistair Scott Johnson. The Navy Lark was presented by the BBC.